uh, welcome back, folks, and we'll just do a lovely session and uh, talk about it after. So um, this session will focus on those seven wisdoms. And uh, in the chat, Teresa is just putting a link to that resource I mentioned, um, Tantra by Geshe Teshi Sering from the Foundation of Buddhist Thought series, which I really recommend if you want to dig into any more of these ideas or flesh out what some of those miscellaneous mantras mean. So if you want to just take a minute and get yourself grounded, really being aware of the weight of your body in the cushion or in the chair, and doing whatever adjustments you need to make in order to feel balanced. And a few deep intentional breaths, letting go of any tension or stress that might have accumulated. and settling on the natural rhythm of the breath. And we'll revive our motivation using the three principal aspects of the path by Lama Tsongkhapa. I bow down to my perfect gurus. The essential meaning of the victorious one's teachings. The path praised by all the holy victors and their children. The gateway of the fortunate ones desiring liberation. This I shall try to explain as much as I can. Those who are not attached to the pleasures of circling samsara, who strive to make freedom and endowments meaningful, who entrust themselves to the path pleasing the victorious ones, you fortunate ones listen with a calm mind. Without the complete intention definitely to be free from circling, there is no way to pacify attachment seeking pleasurable effects in the ocean of circling. Also, by craving for cyclic existence, embodied beings are continuously bound. Therefore, at the very beginning, seek renunciation. Freedom and endowments are difficult to find, and life has no time to spare. By gaining familiarity with this, attraction to the appearances of this life is reversed. By thinking over and over again that actions and their effects are unbetraying and repeatedly contemplating the miseries of cyclic existence, attraction to the appearances of future lives is reversed. When by having trained in that way, there is no arising even for a section of the attractions of to the perfections of cyclic existence and all day and night the intention seeking liberation arises, then the thought of renunciation has been generated. And so just connecting with renunciation, the determination to be free from sara, the wish of definite emergence, and shifting to bodhicitta, the mind of enlightenment. 
even if renunciation has been developed. If it is not possessed by the mind of enlightenment, it does not become the cause of the perfect bliss of unsurpassed enlightenment. Therefore, the wise generate the supreme mind of enlightenment. Swept away by the current of the four powerful rivers, tied by the tight bonds of karma so hard to undo, caught in the iron net of self-grasping, completely enveloped by the total darkness of ignorance, endlessly reborn in cyclic existence, ceaselessly tormented by the three sufferings, thinking that all mothers are in such a condition, generate the supreme mind of enlightenment. In short, if like the mother whose cherished son has fallen into a pit of fire and who experiences even one second of his suffering as an unbearable eternity, your reflection on the suffering of all mother sentient beings has made it impossible for you to bear their suffering for even one second, and the wish seeking enlightenment for their sake arises without effort, then you have realized the supreme precious mind of enlightenment. And so connecting with that mind of enlightenment, Bodhicitta, letting it connect. And shifting to the right view, the correct view of emptiness, wisdom. Without the wisdom realizing ultimate reality, even though you have generated renunciation and the mind of enlightenment, you cannot cut the root cause of circling. Therefore, attempt the method to realize dependent arising. One who sees the cause and effect of all phenomena of both cyclic existence and the state beyond sorrow is forever unbetraying, and for whom any object trusted in by the grasping mind has completely disappeared, has at that time entered the path pleasing the Buddhas. Yes. If the appearance of dependent relation, which is unbetraying, is accepted separately from emptiness, and as long as they are seen as separate, then one has still not realized the Buddha's intent. If these two realizations are happening simultaneously without alternation, and from merely seeing dependent relation as completely unbetraying, the definite ascertainment comes that completely destroys the way all objects are apprehended as truly existent. At that time, the analysis of the ultimate view is complete. Furthermore, appearance eliminates the extreme of existence and emptiness eliminates the extreme of non-existence. If you realize how emptiness manifests in the manner of cause and effect, then you are not captivated by wrong notions holding extreme views. Connecting with that right view, the wisdom realizing the emptiness of inherent existence. In this way, you realize exactly the vital points of the three principal aspects of the path. Resort to seeking solitude, generate the power of effort, and quickly accomplish your final goal, my child. Namo Guruja Bhageja Sharaya. I make humble obeisance to you, great Tsongkhapa, personification of Manjushri in human form with all the marks and signs of perfection. 
Your magnificent attainments were nurtured in the matrix of motherly method and wisdom combined, of which the vibrant syllable D is an embodiment. Sipping the nectars of the profound teachings directly from Manjushri's masterly eloquence, you realize the heart of wisdom. Inspired by your example, I will now set out a description of the steps for actualization of Manjushri, the Bodhisattva of wisdom, in accord with your realization. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. Mm -hmm. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. and the four immeasurables. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from desire for friends and hatred for enemies. And repeating those back over in your mind twice more, Letting them resonate, letting your mind reflect. Um Sawa Shura Sawa Dhamma Sawa Shura Ham. Remembering emptiness. To whatever degree you understand it so far, let your mind rest in that space of infinite possibility. the complete absence of anything inherent. And then you think from emptiness arises your own mind in the shape of an egg at your heart. It's point downward, excuse me, it's point upward. Just bring that idea that your mind is in that aspect. A simple white oval at your heart center. Inside the egg on a full moon disk is an orange letter D from which infinite amounts of light emits. It fills the whole of my body, purifying all my negativities and removing all my obscurations accumulated since beginningless time.
the light rays leave through my pores and become offerings to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, thereby delighting them. This causes the blessings of the body, speech, and mind of these holy beings to dissolve into the light that destroys the darkness of ignorance of all sentient beings, thus placing them in wisdom's illumination. The rays then recollect into the syllable D. It transforms into light. My ordinary perception and my clinging there to vanish. And emerges Venerable Manjushri, orange in color, with one face and two arms. Right hand brandishes a sword of wisdom in the space above. At the heart between the thumb and ring finger of the left hand, holds a stem of an Utpala lotus. Upon its petals in full bloom by the left ear, rests a volume of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. Manjushri sits in full lotus posture and is adorned with precious ornaments for head, ears, throat, and shoulders, as well as bracelets and anklets. Draped in a flowing mantle and skirt of exquisite silks, hair tied up in five knots and coiled counterclockwise. Bearing an entrancing and serene smile, sitting amidst a mass of light radiating from the body. Stabilize the appearance of Manjushri. And as the image becomes clearer, if you have the empowerment, you add divine pride. And without the empowerment, you add strong aspiration. These are the antidotes to ordinary appearance and grasping.
There is a white om at the crown, a red ah at the throat, a blue hum at the heart. Enlighten body, speech, and mind. Whom emits rays of light that invite the wisdom beings from the inconceivable mansion of their own pure lands. They resemble Manjushri as described above and are surrounded by hosts of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. They absorb into me and thus we become one. And you can visualize offering water for the face, water for the feet, flowers, incense, light, perfume, food and music both those set out on the altar, those you imagine, those you've seen in the past. Beautiful and ethically obtained. And we offer them to Manjushri. Om Paya Vagishara Sapariwar Ayam prati sahum soha. Om vaya vagishara satharewa. Ayam prati sahum soha. Om vaya vagishara satharewa. Pure pay prati sahum soha. Om varya vagishara satharewa. Do pay prati sahum soha. Om varya vagishara satharewa. Okay, Prati Sahum Soha. Om Varya Vagishara Sapariwa. Yende Prati Sahum Soha. Om Varya Vagishara Sapariwa. Nyuade prati sahum soha. Om varya vagishara sapariwa. Shapta prati sahum soha. I make obeisance to your youthful form, O Manjushri, like that of a dynamic and graceful 16 year old. You repose upon the full moon as your cushion at the center of an expansive milk white lotus. I make obeisance to your speech, O mighty fulfiller of wishes, so malevolent in the minds of countless sentient beings, a loosened ephony to accord with each listener's capacity, its multiplicity embellishing the hearing of all unfortunate ones. O Manjushri, I make obeisance to your mind wherein is illuminated the entire tapestry of the myriad objects of knowledge. It is a tranquil ocean of unfathomable profundity, of immeasurable breadth, boundless like space itself.
and visualize upon the heart of Manjushri, either yourself or that above, is a moon disc with an orange syllable D. Encircling it at the disc's periphery stands the rosary-like mantra of Om A Ra Pa Tsa Na Di. All the syllables radiate light, which gathers both the wisdoms of exposition, dialectics, and composition, and the wisdoms of hearing, contemplation, and meditation, which are possessed by the Buddhas, <clears throat> Bodhisattvas, Shravakas, and Pratyeka Buddhas, and the wise and learned masters of all the Buddhist and non-Buddhist traditions. Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi. Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi, Om Marapatsanadi. Om Marapatsanadi, 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 Om Marapatsanadi. Om Aravatsanadi. Please grant me blessings to achieve great understanding, which is able to understand and explain the meanings of extensive scriptures without resistance. And we think in response, great understanding in the form of orange colored nectar beams, clarified as pure Lord Manjushri, is emitted from Manjushri and then absorbs into me and fills my whole body. Then atoms of nectar, which are clarified as pure Lord Manjushri, radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons, meaning the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Thus the great understanding of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of the deity's holy bodies absorbs into me and fills my whole body. So just imagine that this great understanding, which helps us both understand and explain these deep and profound Dharma texts, takes this form of Manjushri himself. Countless Manjushris, all in the nature of light, surrounded by light, emanated out and gather back. Om Arabatsanadi Om
Umarapasanati. Please grant me blessings to achieve clear wisdom, which can understand and clarify the details of very subtle and extremely difficult points without resistance. And we think that clear wisdom in the form of orange colored nectar beams, clarified as the syllables of the mantra, Omarapatsanadi, is emitted from Manjushri, absorbing into me and filling my whole body. Then the atoms of nectar clarified as Omarapatsanadi radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. Thus, clear wisdom of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of the mantra, absorbs into me and fills my whole body. And so you can visualize the syllables in the mantra garland, in Tibetan, in English, with the wheel of swords or just on their own. But imagine these sounds depicted filling all of space, one in nature with this clear wisdom going out from Manjushri, absorbing back into you. Inviting this wisdom from the enlightened beings, absorbing into you. Om Rapatsanadi, Om Rapatsanadi. and think that you've achieved this clear wisdom. And then we request, please grant me blessings to achieve quick wisdom, which quickly cuts the non-understanding and wrong understanding and doubts without resistance and quick wisdom in the form of orange colored nectar beams, clarified as the syllable D, are emitted from Manjushri, absorbing into me, filling my whole body. Then atoms of nectars, clarified as the syllable D, radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. Thus quick wisdom of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of the syllable D, absorbs into me, and fills my whole body.
Uma Robertson Aji. And think that you've achieved this quick wisdom. And we request, please grant me blessings to achieve profound wisdom, which can understand and explain the meanings of scripture with depth and without resistance. And we think that this profound wisdom in the form of orange colored nectar beams, clarified as the implements, text and sword, are emitted from Manjushri, absorbing into me and filling my whole body. Then atoms of nectar, clarified as the implements, radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. Thus the profound wisdom of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of the implements absorbs into me and fills my whole body. and think that you've achieved this profound wisdom. And we request, please grant me blessings to achieve the wisdom to explain the Dharma, which gives definite supreme understanding of all the meanings of all the words of the scriptures without resistance and the wisdom to explain the Dharma in the form of orange colored nectar beams clarified as texts are emitted from Manjushri, absorbing into me and filling my whole body. Then atoms of nectar clarified as texts radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. Thus the wisdom to explain the Dharma of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of texts absorbs into me and fills my whole body. Omarapasanati. and think that you've achieved this wisdom to explain the Dharma. And we request, please grant me blessings to achieve debating wisdom, 
which enables one to achieve bravery over evil debate without resistance. And debating wisdom in the form of orange colored nectar beams, clarified as wheels of swords are emitted from Manjushri, absorbing into me and filling my whole body. Then the atoms of nectar clarified as wheels of swords radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. Thus the debating wisdom of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of wheels of swords absorbs into me and fills my whole body. Om Arapatsanadi, Om Arapatsanadi. Omarapatsanati. Think that you've achieved debating wisdom. And then we request, please grant me blessings to achieve writing wisdom, which makes meaning and sound perfect and gives clear understanding and happiness. And we think that Manjushri transforms into Lama Tsongkhapa and his two heart disciples, Kelsip J and Kedrup J. And writing wisdom in the form of orange colored nectar beams, clarified as texts and wheels of swords, are emitted from Lama Tsongkhapa and his two sons. Absorbing into me, filling my whole body. Then atoms of nectars, clarified as texts and wheels of swords, radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. Thus the writing wisdom of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of texts and wheels of swords absorbs into me and fills my whole body. Omarapatsanadi, Omarapatsanadi. Omarapatsanati, and think that you've achieved this writing wisdom. And just gently return to the simple visualization of the mantra garland and one Manjushri instead of two, just yourself, the self generation or those without the empowerment, just the one above your head. 
Om Rapatsanadi, 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 Om Rapatsanadi. And we purify. Om Vajrasapa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapa Teno Padishta Dido Mebawa Suto Kaya Mebawa Supo Kaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutsam Siddham Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawa Sawa Tata Gata Vajama Me Muta Vajabawa Mahasamaya Sapa Aham and think that the mantra dissolves into light and absorbs into you, blessing your body, speech, and mind. And you relax your clear appearance of Manjushri. But if you have the empowerment, you maintain your divine pride. Without the empowerment, you maintain your strong aspiration. And we dedicate. By virtue of this practice, may I quickly accomplish the powerful attainments of Manjushri. And then may I lead all beings without exception to that supreme state. And remembering the emptiness of the agent, the action, the object not a shred of inherent existence because of dependently arising. And you can relax your attention. But um, this idea of maintaining divine pride as you go about your daily life and maintaining kind of clear appearance of the environment as like the abode of the deity and all sounds as mantra. This is for people with the empowerment. Um, if you can try and do that at least at little pockets in the day, it can be very useful. Um, but if you don't have the empowerment, it's very useful to train in kind of a, a coarser but similar version, which is what if everything was trying to teach you something, even though it may or may not be? The Buddhas pervade everywhere, right? The mind of the enlightened beings pervades every atom of existence, which means that Buddhas are everywhere wanting to teach us how to stop hurting ourselves, how to stop hurting each other. And so whether the person in front of us is a Buddha or not, the Buddhas are reaching out to us, waiting for us to reach back. So if you can adopt this attitude of listening for teachings, even in the most ordinary sounds, bird sounds and water sounds and dump trucks and leaf blowers and everything that kind of moves you into this more tantra mindset, even before you have the empowerment. So um, we'll have a stretch, say 20 minutes, and we'll have our final 20 minutes. 